As hurricane season plows on, we have scientists to thank for gathering data to give the most accurate forecast possible. NOAA hurricane hunters are brave enough to fly into extreme storms multiple times a day for hours at a time, even as winds such as with Milton reach almost 200 miles per hour. So we are joined by NOAA WP 3D Orion hurricane hunter pilot who flew into Hurricane Milton, Lieutenant Commander Josh Rannenberg, to peek behind the curtain into one of the most fascinating Jobs possible. Thank you so much for joining us, Lieutenant Commander. Thank you. So can you share in your experience, what is it like to be in a plane flying through these extreme winds, especially with your most recent trip through Milton? Yeah, it's dynamic. The, uh, the turbulence, the rain, the wind shear is all things that we have to contend with as we penetrate the eye of the storm. We'll fly in laterally and we go through it all. Milton had a lot of lightning a lot of rapid intensification, and it was just a monstrous storm that manifested at the end. I gotta know though, okay, so we're talking about a bumpy ride, but like to what extreme, if you could just explain it to us who haven't been through a flight like this, what does it feel like? Um, at its most extreme, it's severe turbulence. It's extreme precipitation. It's can't see much outside the windscreen of the cockpit. You can really only focus on one instrument at a time. Uh, some of the turbulence we hit, and Milton was so severe that my shoulders were actually getting pinched in the shoulder straps. We had uh, anything that wasn't stowed tightly in the aircraft becomes a projectile. So we do our best to strap in and secure everything before we go into the eye of the storm. All right, so what is the training process like to become a hurricane hunter? Because I'm sure you have to be trained uh, to the extreme to fly these planes. Yeah, for me, um, I started in the Navy. I was a naval aviator for nine years, and I transferred in. Once you get into the NOAA Corps and you're selected as a hurricane hunter pilot, we have a two-year syllabus that requires a lot of experience for you to meet wickets in order to graduate and become qualified as an aircraft commander. All right, and bringing it down to a personal level, you said that with Milton, you had to evacuate your own family, I believe? Yeah, that's correct. This is one of the storms, the rare case where the storm is actually bearing down on my home. So while I'm packed for flying eight to nine hour missions every single night, as the storm develops, I'm also worried about making sure my home is okay. My home is secure. My wife and my son had to evacuate. Mm. So they were in evacuation zone A and they're, they're fleeing with the rest of the city to get out of the way here in Tampa. And it's kind of hard to watch a storm that severe as it closes in on your home. It definitely ratchets up the strength, the stress during these missions. Mm. So when you're up in the plane, you probably obviously can't reach down and see if they're doing okay, right? No, not usually. I'm, yeah. I'm in the air for, like I said, up to nine hours. So when I land, that's when I'll check in with everyone back home to make sure that things are okay. Okay. I relate just by when I cover tornadoes and there's a tornado warning if it's headed towards my home or somebody that I know. I always, it, it's so hard not to just text or call and make sure that everything is going okay uh, at home. So thank you for going through yeah. that. I mean, goodness gracious. So when you're flying through the storm, I think we all have the question of what part of the storm are you flying through? So what's your path? What path do you take? Yeah, our, our profile varies depending on mission objectives. What does the National Hurricane Center want? What is the research? scientists on board, what do they need? We generally do some sort of figure four or butterfly pattern as we call it. And we're gonna start just outside the storm environment and we'll proceed directly into the eye, usually 105 miles in one leg. And then we'll punch through the eye wall. We'll get some data inside the center of the storm, punch through the eye wall on the other side and we'll exit the storm environment. We'll then circumnavigate about 90 degrees and do it again. And we'll get data from every quadrant of the storm. These mission profiles can take up to six hours and uh, by the time we take off and land, it's usually a nine hour flight if you include the transit time. Mm. Goodness gracious. Okay, so why is it so important that we do this? Why meteorologists and researchers have to go through that rough ride? Yeah, for sure. The main, the main thing is we have ultimately a weather station on board the aircraft. And when these storms are out over the ocean, there's no way to collect the data from inside the storm that we need. So we bring the weather station to the storm. We fly inside of the weather and we get that data inside. And the big thing that the NOAA Hurricane Hunter aircraft brings that nobody else in the world can do is we get tail Doppler radar, PDR data that gets facilitated, integrated into the supercomputer forecast models. And it literally reduces the margin of error between a forecast and what actually happens. Not just for the storm that we're in that day, but for every storm in the future. So that research is critical to help save life and property before storms make landfall. 
So we get that data also by doing something called a drop sound. Could you explain what that is a little bit? Yeah, we use drop sounds to they grab atmospheric data from inside the storm. So we'll drop these out of the aircraft and get some air column data. They're looking at wind, pressure, temperature, and all the things that a, a forecaster needs to quantify in order to really see what the storm is doing. And we'll be dropping these throughout the storm. One of the most important ones is when, he, when we get a fix on the center of the storm. Where is the lowest pressure, zero knot wind center of the storm? And all the data, the surface data, is going to tell us wind speed, temperature, and pressure. That data will get fed to the hurricane center. Forecasters can see it. So they can see if the storm is progressing like they expect or if something is changing. So I can imagine that these planes are special planes. So you mentioned how it's a bumpy ride, but in your experience, what is the scariest moment that you've had flying through a storm? Has the plane maybe turned a little bit too far sideways or what have you seen? Yeah, you know, I'll say as a trained naval aviator and as a hurricane hunter pilot for NOAA, I, uh, I'm trained to manipulate the aircraft and do exactly what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. And uh, it's unnerving being inside the storm when my aircraft weighs over 100,000 pounds. And we get kind of tossed around like a leaf in the wind. It might roll when I don't want it to. We might climb when I don't want to. We might descend when I don't want to. So yeah, it, it's a bumpy ride. It's very dynamic. But to be honest, inside the storm, there's so much going on that we don't really have time to think about being scared. We're just looking at the next step. Yes. Oh my goodness. So your adrenaline is pumping, but you're just focused on what you're doing. Do your, palm, do your palms get sweaty? Because mine are sweaty as you talk about this. Uh, my, yeah, my palms get a little sweaty. My hands tighten up. My knuckles get sore by the end of it. Yeah. The training that you had to go through, though, was there anything specific to the strong winds that you have to fly through? Yeah, we have a hurricane aircraft commander syllabus that we need to meet experienced wickets for. You need to penetrate the eye of a hurricane. 50 times before you're even able to look at possibly signing for a plane as an aircraft commander. You have an aircraft commander board that we have to go through, you know, four hour oral exam where you stand up in front of the command and you have to answer questions and prove that you have the situational awareness and the knowledge base to operate this aircraft on a dynamic mission. So this syllabus is relatively robust. Yeah, okay, this is my last question, even though I feel like I could talk to you all day. This is so interesting. When you go on a normal flight with your family or friends and you hit turbulence, are you just snoozing in the back like it's nothing? Yeah, usually I'll take a nap, for <laughs> sure. That makes sense. Well, thank you for joining us today and thank you for everything you do. Thank you, I appreciate it.